Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, thank you for your patience. We were just finishing up a forum topic and we will get started momentarily. This January 23rd, 2020 regular meeting of the Fairfax County School Board will now come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, a moment of silence, and the performance of the national anthem by the Kilmer Middle School, Bella Voce, under the direction of Kevin Sapp. That was amazing. Thank you, ladies and Mr. Sapp. A few other announcements before we begin tonight's meeting. If you would like to review a copy of the agenda and any agenda item that is being discussed tonight, that information is on the table at the back of the auditorium. Tonight's agenda is available by going to School Board on the FCPS homepage and selecting Board Docs under Upcoming School Board Meetings. The meeting is also being streamed live online. Select School Board from the full menu, then click on the Watch Live button on the School Board Meetings webpage. Please turn off or silence your cell phone. And now I call on our birthday girl of the evening, Ms. Boateng, for an announcement. And thank you so much for spending your birthday with us this evening. <laughs> African American History Month, February 2020. Originally established as Na Negro History Week in 1926 by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, 
a noted African-American author and scholar. This event evolved into the establishment into the establishment in 1976 of February as Black History Month. The commemoration has increasingly been referred to as African American History Month, although both names are currently in use. This year's theme, African Americans and the Vote, marks the sesquicentennial of the 15th Amendment and the right of black men to, ball to ballot after the Civil War. Through voting rights campaigns and legal suits from the turn of the 20th century to the mid-1960s, African Americans made their voices heard as, the importance of the vote, as to the importance of the vote. The theme of the vote should also include the rise of black elected and appointed officials at the local and national levels, campaigns for equal rights legislation, as well as the, roles, the role of blacks in traditional and alternative political parties. Thank you, Ms. Boateng. I now call on Ms. Derenak Koufax for a resolution honoring Hayfield. Thank you, Madam Chair. I am honored to present this to Hayfield students. Whereas the Junior Classical League is a national organization of high school students who study Latin, Greek, and the classical humanities with members nationwide and several foreign countries, it is the largest classical organization in the world. The Virginia Junior Classical League has over 4,000 members and has been promoting service and the classics across the state for over 60 years. And whereas, the goals of the Virginia Junior Classical League are to promote a more thorough knowledge of and a greater appreciation for Greek and Roman culture, tradition, language, and literature, and to interest other students in the study of the classics. And whereas, on November 24th through the 25th, Hayfield Secondary School sent 26 students to participate in Virginia's annual Latin convention in Richmond, Virginia. This convention is attended by approximately 1,500 students annually by high schools and middle schools located all over Virginia. And whereas the competition has activities including academic tests, graphic and created arts competitions, lecture sessions, informal games, and a talent show. And whereas Hayfield secondary students took home several very competitive awards, which were given only to the top 10 placements, including Best in Show, Level 1 Mottos, Grammar, Vocabulary, Pentathlon, Reading Comprehension, Derivatives. Level 2, Grammar, Vocabulary, Pentathlon, Mottos, Reading Comprehension, Derivatives, and Myth. And in Level 3, Mottos, Life, Derivatives, Pentathlon, Myth, as well as Creative Arts Awards for Small Models, Roman Games, Modern Myth Essay Contest, and English Oratory. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fairfax County School Board honors the Latin Convention Award winners from Hayfield Secondary School on this great accomplishment and conveys its most heartfelt best wishes for their continued success in the years to come. I so move. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Sizemore Heiser. Ms. Derenak Koufax, would you like to speak to your resolution? Just briefly, I see you all out there. I know how difficult that is. I couldn't even say the words, let alone compete in this. Um, but thank you all for being here. Thank you for continuing your study of the classics. I think it's so very, very important. And we are honored to have you here. And congratulations. Ms. Sizemore Heiser. Um, thank you, and, and congratulations. This is an incredible achievement. And I just wanted to share a few words, actually written by my stepson, who also participated in Latin conventions. And just his, um, he's been 10 years out, but what he said was that his favorite moment in participating in these con competitions was that it got his, he and his classmates to study hard, to practice hard, and try to show the 10 or 20 or many other high school teams that they were the best. And while he realized that was a lot of fun, he realizes now that it was much more than that. And I'm going to quote his words. I can picture my teachers now and those at other schools across the country smiling at how successfully they tricked us into teaching ourselves. 
50 or so like-minded students in Northern Virginia coming together once a month, hundreds at statewide conventions, thousands at annual national conventions, all to learn from one another while our teachers sat back and watched. It's a weird kind of beauty, one perhaps only recognizable to educators, only accessible to students in retrospect. I hope that you, as he has, will take this experience and let it inform your life for many, many years to come. Congratulations. So before I call for the vote, I do want to um, congratulate you. I actually took uh, Latin all the way through college, and my first job was translating Latin into English. And so I am just so impressed with what you've done and so excited that uh, people who think that Latin may be a dead language are going to be inspired by all the great things that you are doing. And so bravo, I'm very proud of each and every one of you and just glad that we can celebrate your successes tonight. And so with that, I am going to call for the vote all those in favor of this resolution. And that is unanimous. The motion carries. Um, I see Principal Grimm out there with the students. And please, the students, staff, family, anyone is, who is here to honor these students, please join us up front for a picture with the board and our honored students. Mr. Rigby, I know you're passionate about Latin. You should come up here, too. This is a fun night for South County. So I now call on Ms. Cohen for a recognition of the South County football team. On behalf of the Fairfax County School Board, it gives me great pleasure to honor and congratulate the South County football team on winning the state championship. 
On December 14th, 2019, South County High School's football team, before that defeated Lake Braddock Bruins, but I, will, I won't hold that against you, um, defeated Oscar Smith at Hampton University and won the state championship for the first time in school history. This game was a defensive match that ended in a 14-13 victory, capping off a perfect season. The Stallions won games of all styles this season as they pierced together a 15-0 record. The Stallions were led by their quarterback, oh, poor Matthew, I'm going to ruin your last name. Matthew, say it for me. Dzerski. Matthew Dzerski's opening drive with a six-yard touchdown pass to Zion Dane. A few plays later, linebacker Akibu Karoma nabbed an interception that set up the offense a few yards from the end zone. Kashawn Turan put the Stallions up 14 to seven, and there were two major stops by the defense that helped to seal the win for South County, with one being a second interception. I, congratulations to the South County football team and coaches. I also want to thank the 12th man, the South County marching band, cheerleaders, teachers, families, and community, especially the South County Alumni Association, who came together to support athletes and coaches and cheer them on to victory. To all of you, congratulations on this remarkable and well-deserved achievement. At this time, I'd like to invite Principal Gary Morris, coaches, the football team, staff, parents, teachers, family, and any Stallions fans up on the dais for a picture with the board. It was fantastic. I didn't stop. She was just saying that. I now call on Ms. Keyes Gamara for a resolution honoring the 2019 Citizen Bond Committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Whereas the Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce and the Citizens for Better Schools play a crucial role in supporting our schools and contribute to high quality education in Fairfax County, and whereas collaboration between local public schools and community alike provides a well-trained and highly educated workforce, and whereas first-in-class instructional facilities are required to teach students to think critically and hone workforce skills, 
And whereas an excellent public school system is vital to the quality of life in this community and fundamental to preserving a strong democratic society now and in the future, and whereas members of the Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce led by President and CEO Julie Coons with support from Vice President for Government Relations Clayton Medford and the entire Citizens for Better Schools Committee led by Chairman Lynn Farkas have dedicated their time, energy, and resources in support of passage of the $360 billion school bond referendum with 77.22% of the county's voters voting yes. Now, therefore, be it resolved, <clears throat> be it resolved that the Fairfax County School Board extends its highest commendation and deepest appreciation to the chamber and committee on this occasion for their leadership and outstanding service to Fairfax County Public Schools and unwavering dedication to the children of this community. Your work has aided this community in focusing on the goal of providing the best public schools we can for every child who attends them. Thank you, Ms. Keyes Gamara. Is there a second to your resolution? Yes. Seconded by Ms. Omesh. Ms. Million. Hmm? <laughs> I'm sorry, Ms. Keyes Gamara, keep on going. No, 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 it's fine. No, okay. Um, so Ms. Keyes Gamara, would you like to speak to your resolution? We are extremely grateful to our partners in the community who help us to deal with vital needs to providing excellent education in Fairfax County. Um, our facilities um, are in desperate need of support and we, are, we could not do what we do without your help. And so we are, we, I, the word grateful does not cover it, but we hope that this resolution um, helps you to understand how truly, how much we appreciate what your work and how much our community benefits from that work. Thank you, Ms. Keys Kamar. Ms. Amesh, would you like to speak to your second? Yes, thank you. Uh, first, President Coons, Vice President Medford, Chair Forkus, and the committee, um, thank you all very much. We're incredibly grateful for your efforts. Of course, uh, with a, a large, you know, over thir three quarters of our community supporting this, um, we were very thrilled with the efforts put forth to organize that um, and ensure that we're able to focus on other initiatives while that was uh, taken care of. I, I, for the sake of the public, would love to mention that, of course, funding our schools and ensuring our, our capital projects are, are supported is, is incredibly important, not only so that we can continue to sustain efforts towards uh, environmental and potentially net zero schools, uh, moving towards smaller class sizes, really thinking of ways that we can make our schools better learning environments for our students by ensuring that that funding is there uh, for the necessary improvements and, and additions that we need. Um, but of course, uh, focusing always on, on continuing to fund our schools and the importance of that, which I know is a matter to be raised in uh, Richmond on Monday. Uh, but, but in any case, uh, I look forward to uh, continued efforts in this direction and thank the, the group again for their good work. Ms. Keyes, Kamara, you wanted to correct a comment? I did. I misspoke 360 million, but we're still really grateful. So seeing nobody else, I am going to make one quick statement. Many of the members of the bond committee do not approach the bond as a one and done. These are advocates in our community who lean in in support of public education. And I just want to personally thank each and every one of you for your efforts, not only on the bond committee, but on your effort, in your efforts to support our foundation's work, in your efforts to support our local schools, and in your efforts to be that very important voice of reason um, in coming to the school board and continuously advocating for what is right for all of our children. And so I personally want to thank each one of you. I've had the pleasure of actually working on a number of different initiatives and efforts. I see a few of in the audience that I'm just so thrilled to be able to um, be able to recognize you tonight. 
And so with that, I will call for the vote. All those in favor of the resolution honoring the 2019 School Citizen Bond Committee, raise your hands. And that is unanimous. The motion carries. At this time, I'd I would like to invite members of the Citizens for Better Schools Committee and Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce to the dais for a photo with the board. I now call on Ms. McLaughlin for a recognition of the National School Counseling Week. The National School Counseling Week 2020's theme this year is school counselors helping build better humans will be celebrated February 3rd through the 7th to focus public attention on the unique contributions of school counselors within the United States school systems. National School Counseling Week, sponsored by the American School Counselor Association, highlights the tremendous impact that our school counselors can have in helping students achieve school success and plan for a career. National School Counseling Week is always celebrated in the first full week in February. Fairfax County Public Schools employs close to 700 school counseling professionals, including our school counselors, our directors of student services, and our career center specialists. 
These professionals are committed to preparing students to become lifelong learners and productive members in a global society with a focus on social emotional wellness, academic success, and college and career readiness. Thank you to all of our school counseling professionals for the tremendous work that you do every single day on behalf of our students. As part of the National School Counseling Week, it is an honor to congratulate Kemba Ephraim, school counselor from Gunston Elementary School, who was recognized as the Fairfax County Public Schools Outstanding School-Based Leader for 2019. At this time, I would like to invite Stephanie Gray. Well, actually, I think we do the vote first, Madam Chair, but this was how my notes were, so I'm gonna stop right there. And keep going, okay. Great. So at this time, I would like to invite Stephanie Gray, Amelia Mitchell, Jennifer Glazer, our school counselors, staff, and members of the School Counseling Services to please join the school board at the dais for a photo. And again. I now call on Mr. Frisch for a recognition of the National Career and Technical Education Month. I suppose I should turn the microphone on, being all technical and everything. All right. Uh, Career and Technical Education, or CTE Month, is a public awareness campaign held every February to celebrate CTE and the achievements and accomplishments of CTE programs across the country. This year's theme, Celebrate Today, Own Tomorrow, raises awareness of the innovation and excellence that exists in our CTE programs, as well as the crucial role that CTE plays in readying our students for careers and our nation for economic success. Career and technical education prepares both youth and adults for a wide range of careers from nurse to computer technician. These careers may require varying levels of education from high school to post-secondary certificates to two and four year college degrees. The subject areas most commonly associated with career and technical education are programming, cybersecurity, automotive technician, cosmetologist, law enforcement, nursing, emergency services, culinary arts, child development, education, marketing, entrepreneurship, electronics, and engineering. 
Career and technical education is offered in middle schools, high schools, two-year community and technical colleges, and other post-secondary schools. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 18 of the 20 fastest growing occupations within the next decade will require career and technical education. Thank you to all of our CTE teachers and staff who help students realize portrait of a graduate outcomes and ensure students are college and career ready. At this time, I would like to invite all career and technical education professionals to join me at the dais for a photo with the board. I now call on Dr. Anderson for a resolution on the Red for Ed movement. Good evening, everyone. Whereas the Commonwealth has no more precious resources than its children, and public schools represent the best public means to help Virginia children live rich and fulfilling lives, and whereas Virginia's per-pupil funding for K-12 education remains below the 2008-2009 levels when adjusted for inflation, and whereas teachers in Virginia earn an average of $9,316 under the national average, ranking the Commonwealth 33rd in the nation for average teacher salary. And whereas Virginia, as a national leader in public education, commerce, and civic health, must act immediately to increase investments in our schools. And whereas educators and public education supporters around the country have chosen the color red and the slogan Red for Ed to call attention to the inadequacy of current school funding and the harm it does to children. 
and therefore be it resolved that the Fairfax County School Board honors the work of, Red for Ed, of the Red for Ed movement to enrich children's lives by advocating for increased resources for K-12 schools. <coughs> be it further resolved that this board encourages all members of the community to attend the Education Lobby Day in Richmond on January 27th to stand together to express the needs for our public schools across the Commonwealth. I so move. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Marin. Dr. Anderson, would you like to speak to your motion? I would. This is one of my favorite things. Um, as a former principal, one of the things that I've always said is the most important decision I could make is the person who stands in front of our children each and every day. And also, as a former teacher, none of us goes into this profession for the pay. However, it is important to know that competitive salaries are essential to ensuring that we have, attract, and maintain the best teachers possible. If we're saying that our future depends on our children, then please join us on Monday to express this to our lawmakers so that we can invest in our children like our lives depend on it. Ms. Marin, would you like to speak to your second? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Please excuse my raspy voice. Um, well, from where I sit alongside my colleagues, I can tell you that every day is lobby day for us because without you, there, there's nothing going on in schools. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to advocate like this. Um, we know the value that you bring. It's indescribable. But um, we are advocating for you here. I'm advocating for you um, at the state. And hopefully this state session will be a lot brighter for us all so that you can get in the classrooms you know, every day and not feel overwhelmed, but to do the job we know that you are destined to do. So thank you for everything. And we are here lobbying for you. Thank you, Ms. Marin. Do any of my other colleagues want to speak to this? Ms. Seismore Heiser? I just want to say um, I recognize that day in and day out you bring your hearts and your souls to the classroom and do everything you can for our students and give of yourselves. And it is vitally important that we compensate you in a way that's fair, not just for our teachers, but for our support staff and for everybody in the building. And so um, I just want to thank you for being here. And I hope that someday we no longer need a Red for Ed rally. Um, because our educators are being supported in the way that is commensurate with the professionals and the work that you do. So thank you. Ms. McLaughlin. As the daughter of a former retired teacher, I just wanted to also express my deep appreciation to FEA, FCFT, AFPE, and the other teachers in our community that have all advocated for years about the importance of teacher compensation. Um, I, my family personally experienced watching my father have to leave the teaching profession for almost 20 years because he simply could not support a family on a teacher's salary. And I watched as his daughter um, the light go out during those two decades. Um, and when he did go back to teaching in his final years of life, he couldn't have been happier. It's a calling. And so uh, I want to thank you for taking your time, not just being here tonight, but every single day that you spotlight how important it is uh, that the role that our teachers and educators bring to shaping young lives and that what we do here matters. And if we believe that, then the actions need to speak to that. And while I'm proud of Fairfax, oh, <laughs> well, I'm a uh, <laughs> series enjoying my remarks. Uh, well, well, I do. Uh, very much appreciate that we are fortunate to live in Fairfax County, where I do believe the taxpayers, the board of supervisors, and this school board and superintendent have demonstrated a commitment to competitive teacher salaries and doing our best to make this a profession that people will want to pursue. I know that it's something we'll have to keep working hard at every day. So thank you for being there to lead the charge, and uh, I'm grateful for it. Thank you, Ms. McLaughlin. Ms. Omash? 
Thank you. Uh, in, in an effort not to be too repetitive, uh, obviously our educators are a priority um, and I would love to see us lowering ratios and making sure that we can provide conducive learning environments um, and, and remembering that, our, that all staff in the buildings um, and across our facilities are our educators, from the bus drivers to the principals to the custodians and the administrators. Um, and I just wanted to send a final uh, encouragement for folks to join us on Monday. I look forward to joining in the rally myself and, and to hopefully speaking and getting people energized. And I hope to encourage everyone as well to join us in Richmond. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Omesh. Uh, Ms. Pekarski? I could not let this resolution go by without saying just a few <laughs> brief words. Teaching hands down was the hardest job I have ever had in my life, and I've had some difficult jobs. Um, so I, I want to express my sincere appreciation, not only for doing that hard job. Um, teachers change lives every day in ways that many times you will not, not see. Um, your reach is far, and it, it changes the trajectory of our students' futures. Investing in our children is the single most important investment we can make. I fully support you, I thank you, and um, I thank you. Ms. Tolan. As a teacher myself, of course I have to say something, <laughs> um, but a huge, huge thank you to those of you um, you know, our teachers in the schools and, you know, administrators, our IAs, et cetera. I, sp I was fortunate to spend um, almost my entire day today in and out of schools and had so many conversations with incredible people about some of the difficulties that they have, um, you know, just trying to do the best job they can serving our students. I'm um, super excited to be um, serving on our Human Resources Advisory um, Committee and and want to thank our you know, unions for coming in at the last meeting to really talk about some of these issues and, and um, talk about the things that we need to work on. I'm super excited to work with you and uh, thank you so much to all of you out there in the classrooms and in our schools. Thank you, Ms. Tolan. Ms. Cohen? I just also want to say thank you, I think, um, Hopefully with four teachers up here, four former teachers up here on the school board, I hope you feel represented. That's mm -hmm. our goal every day, is to have you guys feel like we hear your voices. And we're up here fighting um, for everything that makes you all um, better able to do your jobs. So thank you and thank you for being here, not just tonight, but every day for our kids. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Cohen. Mr. Frisch? Thank you. I remember last year's Red for Ed, and we were at a rally in a park, or outside of the state capitol, and um, one of the speakers, somebody came forward and said, they've agreed to 5%, and everybody erupted in applause, and then the older teacher next to me kind of elbowed me as if we were like lifelong friends, and he said, how about seven? <laughs> so I think there's a message in that, and that is never give up. The fight continues, um, and that uh, and this is a value I think we all hold on that, you know, I'm not a teacher, my parents were teachers, but I'm the former student of a teacher's, uh, of a teacher's, clearly. Um, uh, the fight continues, and I think everybody at this dais knows uh, and believes that we shouldn't just be seeking to be competitive, we should be acting in such a way that other districts are seeking to be competitive with us, um, because that's important. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful that so many people are heading back down to Richmond. I myself uh, can't be there this year, but know that I am there with you in spirit and that I will be with you in spirit when I talk to members of our General Assembly uh, and talk about uh, what is expected of people who say that the greatest investment we can make in our, our students is our teachers. What is expected of people who believe that statement is to act like it. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frisch. Ms. Keys Gamara. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, regret that I can't be there on Monday. And so I just want to honor our front line, which is our educators, our teachers. And I know that um, many people in this audience have represented those folks, Kevin and Kimberly and Carla and uh, Robert. We are so grateful. I hope there's not somebody back there whose name I don't know, but I am just, so grateful. I said Carla, I think. 
So, okay, all right. <laughs> but she's got a cheerleader out there. Um, we are so grateful that you have chosen to be the front of the front line because we cannot build community without you. Um, I, wrote, I wrote this, I'm gonna call it a quote, but I just wrote it. Um, Teaching is a tool that allows hope to grow and light the path of our kids. And so I just want you to know that we treasure that and we never forget that when we are advocating. And, you know, it's nice to get a nudge from you every now and again, not too much. We, we know, we know we're fighting always, but we are so, so very grateful. And I want you to know we appreciate you being on the front line and the folks behind you who benefit from your voice, I'm sure would say thank you as well. Ms. Derenak Koufax. So I always say that teachers are the heart and soul of our system. Um, you are the ones that, that you know, teach our kids that are there to help our families move forward, to deal with social and emotional issues that present families. And um, there is, I have said this so many years, there is no harder job, I don't think, than that teacher in the school system, in a system the size of ours, the expectation from the parents. Um, I have been honored to work with all of you sitting in the audience, plus so many others who are not here tonight for the past um, eight years. I look forward to continuing in the next four, and um, I will be able to come down to Richmond this year, and uh, I look forward to the raucous rally that we will have on Monday. So thank you all for everything that you do and for keeping the advocacy out there in the community because I think sometimes in a system as large as ours, it's taken for granted that excellence will just happen no matter what. But we know it's a lot of hard work and, and we understand the rally on Monday is to make those funding bodies out there understand that it's not going to happen without adequate funding for all of you and all the team that support our students. So thank you for being here tonight and I look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you, Ms. Derenak Kovacs. I too would like to offer a couple of words. A Little bit of a history lesson. Virginia is proud of the leaders that it has produced over the um, history of the United States. And a core value recognized by Thomas Jefferson was the importance of education. And 100, over 150 years ago, Virginia was the first state to incorporate public education as part of its constitution. We were in a leadership position. Today, when you take into account all of the funding that Northern Virginia invest in our education system and in our educators. Virginia still falls 33 in the country for funding public education. We need to continuously remember and remind the people of the state of Virginia, the people of the great county of Fairfax County, that a core value as Virginians they say we're, Virginia is for lovers. I like to say Virginia is for education lovers. And so I am very happy to support this resolution and continue to educate and advocate with our policymakers, not only the Northern Virginia delegation, but the whole state about the importance in, of investing in our educators. Because if we take the investment of Northern Virginia out of our teacher's education level, our salary level, we fall close to 50 in the country. We're in the last 10 at least. And so please, everybody, remember that Virginia needs to maintain its leadership in support of public education and public educators. And so I am so thrilled for the second year in a row for this body to adopt its resolution on Red for Ed. 
And with that, I will call for the vote. All those in favor of adopting the Red for, Red, Red for Ed resolution, please show your hands. And that is unanimous, folks. It is my very much my privilege to invite the FEA president, Kimberly Adams, and all those in the audience who are here this evening in support of, Red for, of the Red for Ed movement to please join us at the dais for a group picture. Give them a hand, folks. Go teach. If I may so be so bold, I'd like to invite all of the other teachers to join us. So all of you who are teachers, come on down. I now call on Ms. Seismer Heiser for a resolution on the uh, Equal Taxing Authority. Thank you, Chairman Corbett Sanders. I appreciate it. Whereas the local tax structure in Virginia has become outdated with limitations on counties' ability to raise revenues from diverse sources results in an over-reliance on real property taxes to fund core local government programs and services. And whereas Virginia relies more on local taxes and revenues for funding government services than most other states, and relying too heavily on one source of revenue leaves counties vulnerable to downturns in the real estate market and population shifts. 
And whereas, under the Code of Virginia, county governments have less authority to raise revenues to meet the responsibilities than do cities and towns, limiting counties' abilities to raise revenues through many sources available to cities and towns, including meals, cigarette, and transient occupancy, and whereas providing counties equal taxing authority merely provides local boards of supervisors the ability to levy the same taxes that may already be imposed by city councils, and each locality is best positioned to determine the appropriate mix of revenue sources to meet local needs. Whereas county governments have the same responsibilities as cities for the funding of core services, such as K through 12 education, public safety, social services, and public health. And whereas state funding to localities has continued to decline over the last decade, as direct aid to localities was 52% of the state general fund in fiscal year 20, 2009, but accounts for less than 44% of the general fund in fiscal year 2019, in K-12, the most critical core service shared by states and localities dropped from 35% of the state general fund in fiscal year 2009 to less than 30% in fiscal year 2019. And whereas additional tools to raise revenues would provide counties with options of investing additional funds in critical areas, including K-12 education, transportation, public safety, human services, and economic success. And whereas state enabling legislation is required to provide counties with additional taxing authority. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fairfax County School Board does hereby resolve and express its support and desire for the Virginia General Assembly to enact such legislation as is necessary to authorize Virginia counties to exercise taxing authority equal to that of cities and towns. I so move. I have a second. Second. Seconded by Ms. Darnack Koufax. Ms. Seismer Heiser, would you like to speak to your resolution? Yes, just briefly. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is an equity issue. We have needs in our localities, and it's our local Board of Supervisors who best understand our needs, but we as a county do not have the same ability to raise the revenues to meet our local needs as our neighboring cities and towns do. So it ends up being an equity issue in our inability to fund our needs. At our education system, our population of students that have greater needs are growing, but our ability to raise revenues has not changed. So I think this is of critical importance that we are given our own the self, same self-determination and ability as our cities and towns to support the needs of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sizemore Heiser. Ms. Sternak Kofax, would you like to speak to your second? I think Ms. Sizemore Heiser said it well. Um, I am going to say this is a change that is long overdue. Ms. McLaughlin, would you like to speak to? <laughs> Yes, I enthusiastically said amen to my colleague, Ms. Dernat Koufax, because uh, it, it's the agrarian antiquated legislation that exists on the books has no excuse. And uh, that one of the, the, one of the largest, most complex commonwealths, um, as well as one of the largest counties in the commonwealth, uh, we, we've got to move forward in the 21st century. And so uh, I'm looking forward to our General Assembly taking action and finally fixing this uh, because it's long overdue. Thank you, Ms. McLaughlin. With that, I will call for the vote. All those in favor of the resolution on uh, equal taxing authority, show aye. And that is unanimous. The motion carries. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that is unanimous with Ms. Marin away from the table. The motion carries. The next order of business is citizen participation. 
Tonight we have four citizens that have signed up to address the board. Speakers are requested to limit their remarks to not more than three minutes. The school board will not hear statements involving issues that have been scheduled for public hearings, such as capital improvement program, budget, and boundaries. Complaints regarding individual students or school-based employees should be directed to the appropriate school principal or other school official. Speakers should refrain from using personally identifiable information in connection with an individual student. Speakers are expected to deliver their comments with the decorum and respect appropriate to the conduct of the public's business. Please be mindful that there are often young children in attendance at these meetings or watching at home, so language should be appropriate for all age levels. Thank you for your cooperation, and thanks to those who have come to speak to us tonight. Our first speaker is David Hatcher, followed by Robert Rigby. Good evening again. Proud parent of two former graduates of Fairfax County Public Schools and a former teacher of children with disabilities in Sunday school. Quarterly separation. The word separation has a new con uh, connotation, anything involving government and religion. I'm not sure about quarterly, but happy to look at separation. And given the historic event and announcement by President Trump last week in the White House, in case you missed it, here goes. The federal government will now protect the First Amendment right to pray in schools. At the event last week, the president said government must never stand between people and God. Yet, in public schools around the country, there's a growing impulse on the far left to punish, restrict, and even prohibit religious expression. If you go back 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, this was unthinkable. He said last week, Today I'm announcing new, strong new guidance to protect religious liberty in our public schools. The right of students and teachers to freely exercise their faith will always be protected. Quote, we are rolling back discriminatory regulations on religious service organizations and Point to make of order, sure Chairman. federal government is never used to violate the First Amendment. Mr. Hatcher, could you please hold on one moment? Mr. Frisch. Uh, is it the rules of the school board that the remarks have to be germane to the subject identified, the quarterly separation report, I would argue that simply mentioning it doesn't make it germane. This is... Mr. Frisch, we do allow him to yes. speak to the um, topic, uh, but if he goes too far uh, afoot, then we will uh, stop that. Mr. Hatcher, please Thank you very much. In. No one should feel ashamed of their faith, especially in school or anywhere, a teacher attending the event said. Another attendee, Marilyn Rames, who founded Teachers Who Pray, said the students that I was getting weren't set up for success because they were so significantly behind grade level. I was overwhelmed with the heaviness of the work, so I thought about quitting. I decided not to. I was going to fight, and I was going to pray, and, and, and I'll lift my spirit so that I can do the job that I knew God had called me to. I began praying with other teachers, and we really supported each other, built more hope, more joy in the work, despite it being so difficult, because teachers need that spiritual support and guidance. Secretary of Education Betsy Devos was present, saying too many misinterpret a separation of church and state as an invitation for government to separate people from their faith. In reality, our, our Constitution exists to protect religion from government. The First Amendment affirms our free exercise of religion, and we don't forfeit that freedom in any place, especially in public schools. We now make clear the law requires states to establish a clear process for students who want to pray and face opposition. This state, and all states, will have to notify the administration about all complaints as well. Secretary DeVos said, I, all believers have the freedom to learn, pursue our passions, to use our talents, to live in accordance with the unique purpose that God has called us to. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, President Trump. And God bless our public schools and teachers. Thank you, Mr. Hatcher. I just want to let everybody in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the audience know that we do support our students and our teachers' ability to pray. It is a uh, right, and it, they have the right to privacy as well in their prayers, and we do provide spaces for them to do so. So with that, uh, Mr. Rigby, followed by Ms. Adams. 
First, thanks for the shout out to the State Latin Convention. Hundreds of kids from dozens of school, schools go every year. It's a tremendous time. Good evening, school board members, Dr. Braybrand, and members of the leadership team. My name is Robert Rigby, Jr. I am in my 22nd year teaching here in Fairfax, uh, but I'm also the president of a group called Fairfax County Public Schools Pride. FCPS Pride is a social welfare organization that brings together LGBTQ staff, parents of LGBTQ students, and LGBTQ family members and allies in our school system. First, congratulations on your elections. We're glad you're all here. I want to talk tonight about the monthly separations report. I know for a fact that some of those separations in that report are LGBTQ staff and some are parents of LGBTQ students, children for whom SCPS has become an unfriendly environment. We have made much progress in our school system to become a more friendly place for LGBTQ people and their friends and family, but we have far to go. The tactic of finding who are the perpetrators of harassment and discrimination and penalizing them is like emptying a pond with an eyedropper. The water comes in more quickly than you can take it out. Our task becomes creating a welcoming culture in FCPS through direct lessons, through library collections, through curriculum, through everyday speech from administrators and staff. Quite frankly, many LGBTQ people still feel embattled in our school system. We have to change that. You, this board, sets the tone for the school system with your actions, your resolutions, and your votes. Think about how you can change the culture of FCPS to one in which people feel invited to stay and participate. Thank you for listening. Ms. Adams, followed by Mr. Hall. Good evening, Chairman Corbett Sanders, school board members, and Dr. Braybrand. My name is Kimberly Adams, and I am speaking as the president of the Fairfax Education Association. I hope that each of you will wear the red for ed button that we've given you this evening proudly, and we appreciate that you are supporting this movement with your resolution, and that several of you are joining us in Richmond to fund our future. We know that state funding has not been restored to pre-recession numbers, and with so little funding coming from the state, Fairfax County residents are expected to make up the difference. So FEA is taking the lead here. We're heading to the Capitol on Monday to demand more resources for our students and frankly for your employees. FCPS understands the teacher shortage well and with less funding, this already challenging task is amplified. Teachers are leaving. Year after year, we continue to see classes that are not staffed by qualified instructors and our substitute crisis is a daily reality. While much of the rhetoric is focused on teachers, we must remember that there are thousands of employees that clean our buildings, transport and feed our students, support their mental and physical health, and keep our facilities running smoothly. This board continues to struggle to pay these essential employees a living wage, and so we need this funding from our state to keep those promises. We are thankful that we have elected you to do the hard work of advocating for our schools. Your efforts on Monday and going forward will help to secure a prosperous future for Fairfax County and for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And thank you again to especially those of you traveling with us on Monday. Mr. Hall. Hi, I'm Norm Hall speaking tonight as an individual. I wasn't planning on speaking tonight, but I was concerned when I saw the presentation prepared for Tuesday's work session on advanced academic programs. I couldn't attend that session in person due to my need to attend the SEPTA board meeting. So today was when I watched the video. Deja vu, a repeat, I will explain. During my last appearance before you, I mentioned the hole in the FCPS study of disproportionate discipline with respect to students with disabilities. Now, there's another hole surrounded by your AAP study. Look, both teams of consultants have demonstrated excellent work, but there are critical gaps. I was pleased to hear the lead consultant say that systems were reviewed as part of the study. Yes, thanks to very good questions from school board members, I know that some pertinent data was reviewed 
and analyze. But how does the study perform or mesh with the work to raise the strategic plan metric of participation from 6 to 12% of students with disabilities? I think you all know that I could literally give you scores of names of parents of 2E stakeholders. We shouldn't have to push to be heard in the year when the 2E manual was released. So you know that AAP screening happens in second grade. But if a gifted child also has learning difficulties noted by parents in schools, do you have assurance that the timing of AAP screening will be in sync with special education progress? That's the conversation I want to know is taking place. The coordination of AAP and special education systems is necessary in order to succeed at the one Fairfax standard of meeting the needs of every one of these twice exceptional students by name and by need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. I now call on Ms. Watang for student representative matters. Thank you. I just want to wish everyone a good evening. And as you heard from probably the whole board now, it is my birthday, and I'm actually very happy to, happy to be spending it here. You have a chocolate cake to take home. I know. Where, I want to show you guys, actually. I found this on my t desk today. So thank you. So with that, I also have some things I have to share, like I do every meeting. The, since last time I've been here, I visited two schools, and they were actually on the same day this past week. I visited Annandale High School on Tuesday, and I met with their SGA. And I also visited Poe Middle School. I met with some of their, it was Student Leadership Academy and their NJHS students after school on Tuesday. And I always love making school visits because I always love seeing students who care. That's always something that I, I keep saying I love it because it shows that there are students who want to make a difference in the county, and I'm always pushing for students to make their voices heard, and also having students that ask me about my role, because in a little bit, they'll, SAC will be having the election to see who will be next year's student representative. And I've never been more excited to be voted off an island. <laughs> and <laughs> because while I, I love this job and I love everything I do and I'm, al I'm also excited to see when another student will come with ideas and I'll also be bothering them because I don't graduate this year so I will still be here. You guys will still see a lot of me but it's also January so we still have time for me. Um, let me scroll back. This past week I met with Ms. Carrie Williams in regards of the SRNR. I often go to um, the Minority Student Achievement Oversight Committee meetings, and the SRNR is always a hot topic, so I talked to her about some concerns that we've had through there, and also earlier this, um, in this year during the summer, I sent Ms. Corbin Sanders notes about the SRNR book, things that I like, things I'd like to see improved, and we also talked about those, so it was a very fulfilling meeting. And today, we talked about our forum. I had a, if for those who don't know, or don't remember, at least it was a little while back, me and Miss um, Sandy Evans uh, submitted a forum topic about uh, student engagement with town halls. I would go in more into it, but if you're interested, we can talk more about it later for in the interest of time, it's gonna continue. I'm now with it with Miss Omesh, and thank, I'd like to thank the board, again, for their comments and also their support, and I look forward to the next steps with this. And for the sake of time, I'm also gonna shorten this but I'm still going to mention it, implicit bias. I've, in, I've talked about this many times before, and I'm speaking on it now because I feel as if I've neglected it a little bit since I've taken the board and with, with, I'm not gonna say chaos, but with the busyness that's been going on with the shift of the board and stuff like that. And I'm always, I've been pleased to see that our student resource officers, aka our SROs, complete implicit bias and racial bias trainings. For it. And 
From where this, they say they complete this training to outline attitudes and stereotypes that affect their understandings, actions, and decisions in an unconscious manner. To me, I feel as if this same standard should be given to our staff members and our teachers who interact more intimately with our students on a regular basis. And I understand that I'll be looking, that, I'm just saying that I'll be looking more into it because there's still things that I personally don't understand. And with that, I hope to work with the board members to get more knowledge and information and see what we can do in those steps. Because early this year, I conducted a little survey with 121 students. And mind you, this wasn't a study. It was like a Google form, so don't take my numbers as like statistics. But some of those students that I uh, surveyed, 56.2% of these students stated that they felt as though they've been misjudged by a teacher or a staff member based on their appearance. So as I just want to say, as we continue to move towards a more culturally responsive county, it is important that we continue to dive deeper and always strive for improvement. And I also, while I'm on here, I also want to say happy birthday to my twin sister, Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is the portion of the meeting where the board will confirm any action regarding issues that were discussed in the closed meeting. These issues may include action taken regarding student disciplinary matters. Board members have discussed each individual case, and at this time we'll make several motions to confirm the recommended action. So I now call on Ms. Marin for a motion. I move the paper. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Um, I move to excuse from attendance at school certain students identified in closed meeting pursuant to Virginia Code section 22.1-254B1. Is there a second? Sizemore Heiser. Seconded by Ms. Sizemore Heiser. All those in favor? Those against? Those abstaining? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will call for the vote again. All those in favor of the motion to excuse from attendance at school certain students identified in closed meeting pursuant to Virginia Code Section 221-254B1. That's Ms. Anderson, Ms. Marin, Ms. Sizemore Heiser, Ms. Tolan, Ms. Derenak Koufax, Ms. Keys Gamar, Ms. Pekarski, Ms. Omesh, uh, Ms. Cohen, Mr. Frisch, Ms. Corbett Sanders. Those opposed? Those abstaining? Ms. McLaughlin. That motion carries. I now call on Dr. Anderson for a motion. I move, that, um, I move that the school board uphold the step four decision, discuss in closed session, and deny the requested relief. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Pekarski. All those in favor? Dr. Anderson, Ms. Marin, Ms. Sizemore Heiser, Ms. Tolan, Ms. Naranak Koufax, Ms. Keys Gamara, Ms. Pekarski, Ms. Cohen, Mr. Frisch, Ms. Corbett Sanders. Those opposed? Those abstaining? Ms. McLaughlin and Ms. Omesh, that motion carries. I now call on Ms. Derenak Koufax for a motion. I move that the school board authorize and approve the settlement of Gabadi versus school board case number 1-19-CV-00920 according to the terms and conditions discussed in closed session. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Cohen. All those in favor? That motion is unanimous. It carries. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought you had your hand up. Uh, all those in favor? Ms. McLaughlin, Dr. Anderson, Ms. Marin, Ms. Sizemore Heiser, Ms. Tolan, Ms. Naranak Koufax, Ms. Pekarski, Ms. Omesh, Ms. Cohen, Mr. Frisch, Ms. Corbett Sanders. Those opposed? Those abstaining? Ms. Keys-Gamara, 
That motion carries. We call on Ms. Derenak Koufax for a motion. I move to deny the school reassignment appeal of a student who assaulted and threatened students and school staff and to confirm the decision of the division superintendent. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Cohen. All those in favor? That looks like it's unanimous, the motion carries. Our adopted rules of parliamentary procedure, Robert's rules, provided for, provide for consent agenda listing several items for approval of the board by a single motion. Many, many items listed have gone through board review and documentation has been provided to all board members and the public in advance. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any board member prior to the meeting. 6.01, award the contract for the automatic temperature control system replacement at Cameron Elementary School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Engineered Services, Inc., in the amount of $456,000, and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Item 6.02. Confirm the separations for the period beginning December 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2019. Item 6.03. Confirm the appointments and separations for the period beginning October 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2019. Item 6.04. Appoint individuals to serve on committees as detailed in the agenda item. Is there any objection to approving the consent agenda? Hearing and seeing no objection, the consent agenda is approved. Seven, new business. The following are new business agenda items. There will not be a vote tonight on these items, but action is scheduled at a future meeting. 7.01, award a contract for the Herndon High School synthetic turf fields installation project to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute, deliver, and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Eight, superintendent matters. Next on the agenda is superintendent matters and I call on Dr. Brabrand. Thank you, Chairman Corbett Sanders. A couple of things. First of all, <clears throat> January is National Mentoring Month and FCPS is in need of adult mentors at all school levels. The power of a mentor in a school can really be transformative. Mentors serve as role models and guides and typically meet with the mentee once a week for 30 minutes during the school day. It's flexible uh, around people's schedules. Um, and FCPS provides training and guidance, a background check, and once you choose a location, the school-based coordinator will pair you with a student who shares your interests. Please visit our website, www.fcps.edu, and find out more about how you can mentor a child and make a huge difference in the trajectory of their life. I also want to call your attention to the FCPS Instructional Job Fair. Yes, it's almost time to begin hiring our teachers for next year. We are going to have our first big job fair Saturday, February 1st, our FCPS Instructional Job Fair. And in the instructional job fair, we're going to be looking for the following positions, teachers, counselors, librarians, <clears throat> occupational therapists, physical therapists, and speech pathologists. We already have 285 applicants who will be offered interviews at the job fair at Lake Braddock. And that again is on Saturday, February 1st, and if it's snowing on February 1st, we'll be making it up the following Saturday. And then finally, yes, we're already getting ready to hire, and in some cases, we're already getting ready to graduate some of our students. We're looking forward to our winter graduation ceremonies next month at um, Mountain View High School and Bryant High School. Mountain View's graduation will be Tuesday, February 4th at 5 p.m. It will be held at Centerville High School, and Bryant will have their winter graduates um, walking uh, across the stage on Wednesday, February 12th at 4 p.m. That will be at Bryant High School. So congratulations to our first group of FCPS 2020 graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brabrand. 
Next on the agenda is board reports, and I call on Ms. Keyes Gamara for an audit committee update and Ms. Darinak Koufax for a report from the forum held earlier this evening. Ms. Keyes Gamara. Thank you, Madam Chair. We held our first um, with this board, with our new board, audit committee meeting on January 15th. Uh, we had a discussion regarding procedures, and we also reviewed the facilities report from 2018, which lists a number of possible budget items. And I wanted to make sure the, the I'm sorry, the audit committee voted to ask our chair to bring that information to the general board, since this is a new board, um, and we have a number of facilities concerns that are not covered in, um, currently, we wanted to make sure the board had an opportunity to consider that in uh, the budget, um, such as not having enough support for trades and, um, well, we, we, we need to deal with our facilities. I won't go into that further. We also discussed the possible forum topic on special education, and our auditor general brought forth um, information of how other districts have handled the same topics. And so um, the makers of that motion will now go back, take that information, re possibly revise the language, and then the forum topic can com come forward. We will also be receiving advice from uh, our legal department. And those were our two topics in audit. Our next meeting is February, which I don't have it here, but I believe it's February 13th. 12th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Keys Gamar. Ms. Darnak Koufax. Thank you. Uh, tonight we held a forum and uh, the topic brought forward to us was one referenced by our uh, old birthday girl who I guess is, has left us to celebrate, I hope, um, Ms. Kimberly Boateng. Um, it was Ms. Boateng's advocacy to strengthen the student voice at our high schools by implementing a council of sorts at every high school and secondary school in the county and to give students a direct outlet to air any general issues felt by the student population. The board was given a listing of current opportunities at our high schools, and while we all agreed that there were many robust opportunities for student engagement, the desire to increase the student voice um, in a in an even broader sense was something we strongly supported. So this forum topic was approved unanimously and it was referred to a future work session, a future school board work session uh, to discuss possible processes to implement this student advocacy initiative. Thank you, Ms. Darinette Koufax. Next on the agenda is board matters and I call on Mr. Frisch. Thank you. Um, first, let me say, um, as many of our educators and other stakeholders head to Richmond on Monday uh, for Red for Ed, I hope every Virginian within the sound of our voices will contact their delegates and senators um, and express to them how important it is uh, that our uh, statement of values is reflected in the money that we send for the resources that our educators need. Um, so. This week, I had the opportunity to visit several schools attended by Providence District students with Rebecca Boenig, our uh, Assistant Superintendent for Region 5, Woodson High School, Frost Middle School. I will say that Principal Anthony Harris at Frost was named Region 5 Outstanding New Principal, so we're excited about that. Uh, Mantua Elementary and Providence Elementary. I'm incredibly grateful to have had the opportunity to meet uh, our principals, our teachers, and also for the opportunity to observe a variety of different uh, subjects being taught in the classroom. I was really impressed uh, by one of our STEM labs where students are preparing to build model bridges to see if they can make them withstand uh, natural disasters. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, not because they're necessarily uh, trying to come up with the schematics for uh, you know, the engineering of a bridge, but because they're learning critical portrait of a graduate skills uh, like creativity, problem solving, working together, uh, and critical thinking. Um, so I've uh, scheduled my February coffee and office hours. We'll be having our coffee at Caboose Commons in Mosaic on Thursday, February 13th at 10 a.m. And our office hours uh, for one-on-one -on -one and small group meetings will be at the Oakton Library on Thursday, February 27th from 8 to 10 a.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. As always, I encourage you to sign up uh, for our newsletter 
for Providence District news and events, and also to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the other social medias, at Carl Frisch for timely updates, news, and events. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frisch. Ms. Cohen? I want to echo um, what my colleague said. The, the highlight by far, um, so far being a school board member, is having the opportunity to get to spend some time in our amazing schools um, with all of our incredible kiddos. So I have had the opportunity in the last two weeks to visit um, a few of our amazing schools. I went to Sangster, Irving, uh, West Springfield High School, Lake Braddock High School, and finally Cardinal Forest Elementary School, whose principal, Miss Felicia Drake, was just named region for first year principal of the year, so shout out to Miss Drake. Uh, I'm blown away by all of our amazing students and staff and how our buildings are working together. It's been um, an amazing opportunity to see all of the learning that's going on in our buildings. I'm looking forward to more visits. I have five more schools coming this next week. And um, like Carl, my first newsletter came out today and I will be hosting my first PTA coffee on February 4th at 10 a.m at the West Springfield Government Center. And please feel like you can attend even if you are not on your school's PTA, though as a former PTA president, I will encourage you to join your school's PTA. Um, but I'd love to see you and uh, get to hear from you about what's going on in your community. So thanks very much. Ms. Hamash. Thank you. I uh, would be remiss not to mention, of course, um, Martin Luther King Day was on Monday and um, was very pleased that many of us were engaged in all sorts of service activities on that day. Um, and I would also like to mention how proud I am to see Ms. Boateng's efforts uh, to empower students and look forward to seeing many students who may be listening, maybe, not, maybe aren't, but um, take initiative and participate with us. Uh, this, you know, the past week, several of my colleagues and I had the opportunity to attend the Virginia School Boards Association Conference uh, for new members. I also had the pleasure of attending the Special Education PTA's uh, general membership meeting. And just this morning with Ms. Bukarski, attended uh, or visited Rocky Run Middle School where we had the opportunity to really witness FCPS on in action, especially a program rolled out for four years in that school and really had um, a chance to see it uh, truly and, and see it for its merits and, and opportunities. I uh, also had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Duran to discuss equity programs and uh, provide my thoughts and I look forward to following up on that. A couple things I wanna flag for the community. Um, there, the budget and capital improvement program public hearings are coming up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Please sign up to speak if you have concerns, thoughts, uh, things you would like to see, priorities. Uh, we would love to hear from the community and I look forward to hearing your concerns and um, uh, optimism. Um, the other, looking ahead, I will be visiting two churches this weekend. So to, the, um, to Mr. Hatcher's point, of course, um, faith communities uh, matter to me and I look forward to seeing how we can continue to support them, uh, knowing that our schools do a wonderful job already. Um, and I also, my school board video will be coming out soon. I filmed it just this week um, and look forward to sending it to you all in our newsletter. So look out for that. I will also be attending Mountain View's graduation and I'm very excited to do so. I did um, want to just address actually uh, public comment. Um, you know, to the point on funding education, of course, we all expressed our support. And I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, in addition to supporting staff, it, it's uh, critical for so many programs in, in our schools and instruction and supports for students. Um, but to the point on um, prayer, there was the mention, of course, um, that no one should feel ashamed in our schools. I was a product of our school system myself, um, as a, especially as someone of a minority faith. Uh, and it was actually beautiful, and seeing it as an opportunity and a representation of our community to hear first from someone who had uh, you know, a, a passion for representing faith communities, um, shortly followed by someone who was advocating for uh, FCP students who are part of FCPS Pride. And it's precisely that kind of collaboration, communication, advocacy for all parts of our county uh, that I look forward to seeing and that I uh, look forward to thinking about ways we can, we can um, empower everyone. Uh, and I certainly will continue to be an advocate for folks who um, want to find places to pray in school. I know my principal supported me when I was at Robinson, and I want to um, certainly make sure that's the case for all. 
uh, and know that our staff already do a wonderful job and, and work very hard to do that um, and hope to see that across the county. So thank you. Ms. Bikarski. Thank you. One of the highlights of my um, week was uh, actually attending the Centerville Pyramid Choral Concert um, and the schools that were represented there. We had students from Union Mills, Centerville Elementary, Center Ridge, Colin Powell, Bull Run, Liberty Middle School, and Centerville High School. It was an amazing concert and um, I want to thank the teachers. Uh, there were many kids there to get all of those kids uh, in, in there and, and sounding wonderful. And when Dr. Brabrand always talks about the special sauce of FCPS, I happen to think that one of those ingredients is our arts programs and particularly our performing arts programs. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I have started my school visits. I look forward to um, visiting all of the schools in the Sully District and, and some of the ones where Sully District uh, students attend um, nearby. And today I was um, excited to have my colleague out on my side of the county at Rocky Run. Um, and we were able to, to see student learning in action and also to see the renovation that taxpayers have invested in is amazing. And I wanna send a kudos, especially to our facilities, our design and construction teams, our architects and our leadership at Rocky Run who have made that transition so smooth. And I'm very excited for the wing that will open in April. Um, and I would also like to congratulate congratulate Dr. Goodlow from Rocky Run, who was awarded today the Region 5 Outstanding Principal of the Year. I cannot imagine a more deserving leader in our, in our county, so I'm very excited for that. Please sign up for my newsletter, and I look forward to visiting many more schools next week. Thank you. Ms. Keyes Gamara. So thank you. I will just touch upon a few things. My highlight was uh, attending a day of service uh, at the Jewish Community Center on Martin Luther King Day, uh, the day of giving together. And um, it also focused on students uh, and volunteerism. So we had uh, students there from Waples Mill, Sangster, Franklin Middle, and many more schools, and they were putting together packets for uh, children in hospitals and other needy people across the county. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I also wanted to just mention um, that I've been able to t attend the Title I meeting. They were, I snuck out of the work session. Uh, that's where I got the popcorn from. But in any case, they were showing the movie, um, Re the, the Resilience Film, and um, they uh, distributed a trauma booklet as well, which I will be reviewing. So um, they're doing some amazing work and the popcorn was good as well. So I look forward to uh, working with my new colleagues and I'm gonna cut it short because I know I promised the security guard we would be getting out of here tonight by 8.30. Miss Derenak Kofax. Hey, we're running a good time here, guys. Um, I want to uh, let the community know that I have scheduled my Kofax coffee for February 11th at Grounded Coffee. That will be my morning opportunity to come out and chat from 9.30 to 11. And then um, on, um, now here I go. It's in March and I'll get it for you because it's a wow, it's a ways away. But uh, March 18th, I will have my Lee District evening office hours from 5.30 to 7.30 at John Marshall Library. Um, I also wanted to uh, let uh, all of everybody out there know that I will join you with some of my colleagues on Mondays, um, Red, Red for Ed March down in Richmond, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, that same night when the Red for Ed rally is on Monday evening is the night of our CIP and budget hearings. So right now we have three days, three days scheduled, but only one day right now is filled. So unless there is a need to hear from additional members, and meaning that more than 100 people would sign up for um, Monday evening session, um, we will complete those hearings that evening. But we do have other opportunities if there is a need that occurs. So thank you so much. Ms. Tolan. Thank you. 
Um, I also have had um, the amazing opportunity to get out to um, some of our Drainsville schools and um, just wanted to um, say how impressed I am with the work that's going on out there uh, in, our, in the area of high achieving um, academics. I was very impressed with um, my observations in a uh, flipped uh, geometry honors classroom today at Cooper and also just um, observing the exciting use of um, blended learning and you know, use of te technology throughout the school. Um, on the arts side, um, I was able to hear our award-winning uh, Cooper Orchestra today, and they were absolutely fantastic, and they are off to Disneyland tomorrow for a field trip um, to show off their incredible work. Um, I was very impressed with Spring Hill Elementary School and hearing about the innovative ways that they're reaching out to their um, international community. Um, I visited Clearview, and again, uh, I'll echo kudos to our design and construction staff. Um, they're, they're a couple years in, they got about a year to go on a renovation at that school, and um, it's pretty incredible, the changes um, that are happening out there. The staff is super excited and I was able to see a number of those new uh, classrooms and everyone is thrilled. I, um, in the area of community service, I want to make a shout out to the entire Langley Pyramid. They are doing a Pyramid uh, Rise Against Hunger fundraiser and the announcement to sign up to volunteer, to, then they'll use that money and put together meals on February 8th. Um, the announcement just came out yesterday, and I went to sign up to volunteer um, yesterday evening, and the entire uh, set of volunteers was, you know, already filled up. So the, the people across the pyramid are really stepping up um, for that uh, Rise Against Hunger fundraiser that they're having. I was excited to see that. Um, my colleague, um, Carl Frisch, and I uh, had our first executive meeting for the uh, Joint envi Environment um, Task Force that we have with the Board of Supervisors, and we're looking forward to our first meeting um, as new board members on that task force on February 19th, and that group is looking at issues across um, energy, waste management, transportation, and green workforce development. So we'll keep you apprised on what's happening with that. A huge thank you to my Drainsville constituents um, over the just the three weeks I've been here. I've gotten lots of notes, lots of emails, had meetings with constituents, and um, gotten lots of input on our uh, capital improvement program and the budget. And I look forward to seeing uh, many of you on Monday night. Um, to talk about this further. Um, as I mentioned last time, I'm collaborating with um, John Faust, our supervisor, on um, newsletters and getting information out. So John Faust's last newsletter had a note from uh, me in there, and um, I'll be getting out my own personal newsletter in the next month. So watch for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tolan. Ms. Sizemore Heiser. Thank you. Um, I will keep it brief, but I just wanted to say um, it's been an amazingly exciting three weeks, and I love this job. So I'm, I'm really excited to be here in the work that I've done. Um, I've had some great meetings with our leadership, um, with Dr. Duran, um, with Ms. Johnson, about the needs of some of our most vulnerable students and how to make sure that we are um, looking at all of our programs with an equity lens to meet the needs of every child by need and by name. Um, on that topic, I had a great morning this morning um, touring our special education um, services as well as visiting some of our um, special education sites. I went to Kilmer Center and saw the um, great work that Kilmer Center is doing. I spent some time at Cedar Lane, a public day school, to see some of the great things Cedar Lane is doing. And I also visited the CSS Enhanced Autism sites at Old Creek Elementary School. And what I loved what I saw at Cedar Lane in particular was I saw that um, I walked into a music class at Cedar Lane, and it was such a welcoming, comfortable environment where every student was engaged and seemed interested in what they were doing. And, and that's a challenging population, so it was really great to see um, a place where the students felt really comfortable. And similar we, with Kilmer Center, I loved the sensory lighting, the um, sensory um, 
supports that were within each classroom. So um, I was very, very impressed with what we're doing, and, and there's a lot of great work to be done. I did have a great conversation with our Boy Scouts this weekend on civic engagement, and uh, one of my passions, as some of you may know, is um, getting our students more civically involved on um, and so it was really, really wonderful to have some very thoughtful questions. They had watched our first school board meeting. I apologize to them for that because they sat through the whole thing and they were very engaged, but I was very impressed with them. They had some very thoughtful questions, so that was great. Um, just a couple quick things. I will be holding my first office hours on Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. at Breeze Bakery in Annandale and on the following Wednesday from 2.30 to 4.30 at Caboose. Um, I will be downstairs in both locations. I um, sent out my first newsletter this week and I just want to give a a shout out to the people who sent me some very nice comments back. My goal with my newsletter is to try to provide resources to our families so they can know how to access our um, schools. And other than that, I'm just looking forward to the work. I will um, pass it on to my colleagues, but just want to say I love what I'm doing and I, I want to hear from you, so please reach out. Thank you. Ms. Marin. Hi, good evening. Um, well, in just the first few weeks of January, I've been acclimating to the many different aspects of this wonderful job representing the Hunter Mill District. Um, for one, I've been visiting schools as well, and it only reaffirms how devoted and skilled I've come to see our staff to be. Um, we have amazing people working in schools, amazing programs, um, such thoughtfulness and um, interest in weaving together different experiences from global classrooms to outdoor classrooms to um, special education services to um, advanced academics. I'm really enjoying speaking with the principals and I'm eager to turn to them when information comes my way and I need their opinions and advice because I've met principals who have been um, at a school of 18 years, um, like Louise Archer Elementary, but also got the chance to visit Armstrong Elementary and attend a PTA meeting there as well. Um, Flint Hill Elementary, Madison High School, where I particularly got to see how students are student technology interns, and they are helping to be the technology um, support staff for FC, not staff, but support for FCPS on. And just the way that the school is taking that learning opportunity to show how students can gain those skills and, uh, you know, uh, learn those portrait of a graduate skills. They're communicating, they're customer service oriented, um, and just two amazing teachers explaining that program to me. It really knocked my socks off. Um, and then today I was at Aldrin Elementary for a really humbling um, and wonderful time there. I spent a lot of time investing in getting to know their school board member, so I was really pleased to, to talk with them and listen to them. Um, also, while connecting with the community, I was able to attend a Resting Community Center's Martin Luther King Day event, which featured Bakari Sellers, who gave a really wonderful civil rights era history lesson of which he, you know, his father was um, living the civil rights movement. And then I was able to make some remarks to the crowd in which I said that, you know, we as a district are doing a lot to move forward our cultural uh, um, responsiveness and you know, anti-racist curriculum efforts, and people were really excited to hear that. So um, that was very exciting. And then a bunch of us were down in Richmond last week, too. Uh, we were attending the Virginia School Board Association's new member orientation, so we squeezed that in there somewhere. And then um, we also had a school board retreat last week, so really trying to work together as a board of one so that we can best represent all of you and work with our amazing staff. And I also had the opportunity, lastly, to meet with my counterpart over at the Board of Supervisors, Walter Alcorn, and his staff, um, because he is very eager, and as am I, to see our two boards working together um, I really believe that we can do a lot if we can continue to collaborate in even newer ways. So it's been a great few weeks, and um, you could tell I'm a little bit tired, but I'm certainly not down for the count. So I'm looking forward to resting up and coming back. So thank you. Dr. Well, Anderson. Oh. I'll try to keep this brief to honor uh, Ms. Keys Gamara's promise to um, our staff here to get out of here fairly early. Um, the highlight of my week has been all of my visits to schools, and I, I think so far I'm up to about 10. So it's been kind of a, a major goal of mine, and I've learned so much about our district, um, Mason Crest, here right up the street. One of the highlights for me this week was my visit to Holmes Middle School, where I had the opportunity to um, visit the school with Ms. Barnes and also talk with her at length regarding some of their initiatives. Um, but I really appreciated touring the school and really seeing education in action. 
as a teacher and a principal, this is my bailiwick. And seeing the children engaging with their work with technology and um, several classrooms was it was fascinating in terms of their engagement with each other, their engagement with their teacher, and also with the technology to procure their information. I took a short video if anybody's interested in that, but it was a great opportunity to see how technology, when used properly, can be such an enhancement to our students' um, learning opportunities. I had the opportunity also to um, tour and visit Bailey Elementary, attended um, Bailey's um, PTA meeting, the joint meeting between lower and upper, actually scored my first swag as a school board member. They gave me a nice little Bailey's Elementary cup. And I was hoping to bring it tonight, but I had forgot it. But thank you so much, Ms. Lamb at Bailey's for that. And during that meeting, students were also highlighted, which was wonderful. Second graders shared their PBL activity. Um, they were learning about um, the migration of birds and what would happen if some birds were not present um, or were not able to migrate. It was such deep opportunity for learning. And the fact that I got a chance to ask second graders their thinking and they were able to articulate it so clearly was very impressive. So thank you to the teachers there for their continued efforts. Um, my newsletter will be coming out next week, so please look forward to that. And community hours also will be starting next month. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Ms. McLaughlin. Uh, last but not least, uh, I want to first thank the residents of Fairfax County, both in Braddock and outside of it, who came to my two sets of office hours yesterday morning and yesterday evening over at the Kings Park Library. Uh, your input is extremely helpful to me in my role of representing our community. I also want to give a special shout out to our teacher in the audience, Sean Duffy from Waples Mill Elementary. Uh, Sean was instrumental in making sure I personally knew about the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service celebration over at the Jewish Community Center. And it was wonderful to see such a huge turnout of not just the Waples Mill Elementary families, but uh, so many families in Fairfax County that uh, the event was uh, filled to overflowing and uh, that meant over 600 uh, families and individuals had come out in support of this important day and in, in recognizing Dr. King's service and how we teach young children what it means to give of themselves to others. Uh, I, I want to thank Volunteer Fairfax and the CEO Stephen Muddy who was very gracious in including um, Karen Keys Gamara and myself and our former colleague Dahlia Palchek in um, speaking to uh, the community as well about this um, special day. Um, I also want to join my colleagues in congratulating Frost Middle School Principal Anthony Harris uh, for his recognition of the Region 5 Outstanding New Principal, as well as the Cardinal Forest Principal Felicia Drake, both well-deserving and excellent leaders. Um, I also want to tell my colleagues that I really enjoyed a week ago, hard to believe it was just a week ago, that we were together for six hours for our intense Intensive retreat uh, at FCPS headquarters in the conference room. Um, it was very helpful um, as the 12 of us get to know one another, uh, the time that was uh, spent uh, talking about what it means to take 12 individual elected officials and how to work as one team. And uh, so also a special thanks to our chair, Karen Corbett Sanders, who pulled it all together for us. Um, I also want to share with my colleagues that um, in the past two weeks since we met together, uh, I did have a two and a half hour meeting with some local attorneys talking about our special education families, um, as well as those families going through our discipline hearings process. And I will prepare a memo for you, but as someone who spent the last eight years trying to um, help our system become better partners with our families, uh, I look forward to the continued work we'll need to do in those areas. And then on a personal note, and just to leave it on a happy note, uh, for those of you in the audience who happen to follow national football, uh, I am a 49er fan for more than 40 years, showing my age. Go Niners! <laughs> And uh, so I am extremely excited for those who are looking forward to watching the Super Bowl that this is the 25th anniversary since the 49ers last won a Super Bowl in 1995. So I hope that uh, if you don't have a special team you're rooting for, please pick the Niners. Go 49ers. 
So before I gavel down the meeting, I do want to offer a couple of comments regarding, <laughs> regarding Mount Vernon. Um, but first, I want to thank all of my colleagues for um, your just very intentful and thoughtful work that made our first retreat um, last week a very successful retreat. I do believe that, is, that this is one board for one Fairfax, and I appreciate each and every one of you and the work that you are doing in support of all of the students, families, and staff of Fairfax County. I also want to thank the 800 volunteers who showed up at Hayfield Secondary School um, in support of supporting our military uh, folks deployed abroad. And uh, it was just an amazing event, and I am just so honored to be able to share Hayfield Secondary School with my colleague, um, Tammy Derenak Koufax. I want to thank uh, Holly Elementary School's PTSA for hosting me last night. We had a wonderful discussion about important um, aspects of their students' education and how we can continuously improve. And I want to thank the Garrison Commander for uh, having so many of us on Fort Belvoir this week uh, talking about how we can strengthen and deepen that partnership which has been in effect for over 60 years. And finally, I want to remind my colleagues that we will have another opportunity on February 3rd, and that opportunity is to work jointly with the Board of Supervisors on our first joint retreat. And if uh, people are interested, February 1st, please come to Mount Vernon High School for our annual Mount Vernon Town Hall. It is a great opportunity to get to know the southernmost part of this wonderful place called Fairfax County and hear about all the great things happening in our community there. So with that, I am going to gavel this meeting down and thank you for all you do.